This is the first official uh, town hall meetup. I'm coming up with these names as I go, even Voice of Disa. I started this community on Saturday and it just, I don't know, for some reason, out of all the names that I could think up, Voice of Disa kind of felt like the best at the time. And uh, the town hall meetup also felt like an, a good name for the for the for these meetups uh, because I intend to have them on a weekly basis. And they're not only meant for those who have joined the the, the voice of DSO uh, clan, but they're meant for everyone. And it's more about uh, having sort of like a rundown similar to what uh, happens on the Fridays on on Clubhouse. But this is maybe just more on a sort of technical slash focused. Uh, perspective versus the, the the Friday sort of weekly rundowns. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we are currently 18 members strong in the Voice of DSO community. Now, where is the community? The answer is it's on Telegram at the moment. So, if the question is why Telegram, the only reason is because currently on the DSO platform, there is nothing officially that has been launched that uh, we could use to create communities and where we can sort of strategize and work uh, as, as a team. Right now, everything is very, very open. And if if there are communities that already exist, then I apologize. And please make a note of that when we get to the Q&A because I have asked around and I haven't found, the only time I get any kind of response is when someone says, no, it's coming, it's coming. And for me, it's very exciting to know that the, the DSO community DAO and DAO DAO itself and a couple of other these uh, applications and platform or applications are coming up and are going to provide us with some crazy functionalities. It's really exciting to know that this is going to happen. But I'm a person, I, I'm, I'm, it sounds weird, but I'm a man of action and I cannot wait that long. I, I have things that I want to get done and I'm sure everyone has seen with my tutorials I, I, I don't talk about things. I sort of like to come in and do it and, and get going with things because I, uh, the DSO community deserves it, number one. And number two, that's just sort of how I roll. Uh, so the voice of DSO currently exists on Telegram temporarily until such a time as the first uh, uh, platform on DSO that, that launches and does make sense. Then we will, as a community, we will agree, okay, do we go and move ourselves off of Telegram and rather go on to DSO, which is obviously going to be preferred. And, and that's not going to be my decision. It is going to be a community decision. So that leads me to the next point is that the voice of DSO is, uh, I'm, it, we are simulating a DAO. Okay. So, uh, we, we, I'm trying my best to treat it as a DAO. And in doing that, what I mean is that, um, I'm not here to be lawgiver. I'm not here to be place this admin or anything like that. I'm here to merely initiate ideas and, 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 and to work with others in order to sort of make things a reality as best as what I can from my side. Uh, but as a community, whenever decisions need to be made, the intention is that similar to a DAO, we will use the Telegram polls and we will submit the polls and they would, um, and then the community will go and vote and, Inside the community, I'll show everyone shortly, there is a very, very simple, very sort of archaic, but very simple structure in how we can go about just voting and 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 sort of actioning certain things within the Telegram group. group. I'll get to that in, in, a, in a bit. So we've already sort of jumped into the conversations, and for some reason, my notes say that I should only now start talking about the agenda of today. But anyways, um, let's rather go, let's go into the why I created this community. When I joined DSO a month ago, there are two things that really sort of had me stick around. The first one is that I was overwhelmed at how small the community is, yet how engaging everyone was when I joined a month ago versus how big Twitter is and the thousands of followers I have on Twitter. Yet when I sort of communicate and try to uh, create conversations on the Twitter realm, there's hardly anything I get a like or two now and then, which was quite a kind of disappointing. And I know that I have real followers. They're not, they're not bots or anything like that, more for the most part. Yet on the DSO platform, there was this sort of, uh, this feeling of, of, well, you know, if you're posting content, people can't wait to tip you, which is, which was crazy for me. So I thought that was quite kind of exciting and it was, it's, it was a big shift from what I, what I remember, uh, cause I'm, a, I'm a big Twitter person. Well, I, I'm, I can actually say that I'm, I was a big Twitter person because if you go and take a look at my profile now on Twitter, I was busy a month ago and then suddenly I went almost dead quiet. And the reason for that is because I've focused all my efforts on the DSO platform. I really believe in this technology. 
So that comes to the second reason why I've sort of created this uh, this voice of DSO is because I'm a software engineer. I build applications. I've been a software engineer for 20 years, and I've built over 300 various kinds of applications for all kinds of people. But last year, I jumped into the Web3 space, and I am now building what they call dApps, which is decentralized applications. And about three months before I, uh, yeah, about three months before I even knew what DISA was, I was actually building a specific decentralized application called Metability that was going to be launched on the Avalanche blockchain. I really liked what the Avalanche blockchain was doing, and their gas fees seemed to be very respectable. And it was a place for me to start because, I mean, where else were we going to go in order to sort of offer some of the things that I wanted to do? Because Metability is learn to earn. And in order to earn via learning, I was really going to have to come up with some weird ways of getting learners to be able to earn an actual crypto income by learning and participating in events. So I had ideas, but ironically, a month ago, I I just stumbled across across DISO and DISO's architecture fit what I needed in Metability almost to the T. I was so excited when I finally started understanding the nuts and bolts of the DSO platform, which is why I was comfortable to start uh, submitting the videos because the um, firstly, I didn't, it, it didn't feel like there was much out there. But then secondly, I realized that as soon as I am understanding a lot of this, let, let's just get it in some sort of formal way. I am used to videos. I am a content creator. Let me grab my expertise and let me just start throwing some videos uh, in the way of DSO. And it, it, it was really, really well received. So obviously, one thing led to another, and I started working with a lot of uh, people and started um, uh, getting to know a lot of you on the on the platform and getting to respect a lot of you on, on the platform that are really doing a great job. So let's fast forward a little bit to, to sort of the UST uh, lunar crisis, because if I'm not, and, and from what I understand, and thanks, uh, Sean, Sean Slater actually helped me um, a while ago understand what DISA was a year ago versus what it is a month ago. But even when I joined a month ago, when the DISA price was around $30 a coin, even though I was enjoying the community, I I did feel that some of the original people that were still on the DISA community were kind of starting to moan a little bit and saying, like, this is not what DISA was. You know, like, DISA has dropped a little bit. And then UST, Luna crisis happened, and then we really saw the drop, right? And, uh, and I've been here before, and I think this is one of the reasons why I created this community is I've been here before because I was actually part of this in a, another community that focused on the Node.js and, and those kind of sites, and there was communities that were trying to innovate in a certain space, and they just couldn't get off the ground. And I was part of those communities, but the good news, I mean, while those are now running smoothly and everything is good, uh, joining the DSO, I found myself back in one of those situations where – I'm part of a big, bigger uh, community that seems to be on a bit of a low and not seeing great days. And the 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 the, the actual team behind it, like the, you know the DSO core team and everyone, are working themselves sick to the bone. There's no doubt about that. But there's just an unfortunate amount of silence. And I've been here. I've I've seen it. And one of the things that I realized as well is that there's a lot of talk up and down the DSO feed, and most of the most of the talk is about. I, I am 100% DSO. I'm here all the way, and 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 we're going to make DSO better. We're going to make DSO great. And I appreciate all of that. I, I appreciate that kind of discussion on the uh, that, that's happening. I I appreciate that kind of vibe from from a lot of people. But from my experience, and please, this is just my opinion. But from my experience, when you when new people join a platform that's at a quiet stage, where pretty much all that most of what's in the DSO feed is either people trying to sell NFTs or people sub- saying good morning, GM, or what's happening with DSO's price or, you know, I'm sticking around until the end. And what, what happens is if this is what you see, it paints a, a pretty grim pr- picture on a platform that is, in my opinion, a bit before its time. And what I decided to do, and I said this out on the DSO feed, I said, why don't we rather – Take this conversation. Let's let's go put ourselves in a group. Take this conversation and let's let's do something. Let's actually, as a team, those who are really willing to go, let's talk about it. Let's work out things. Let's go and do something. Let's find strategies and stuff. Let's not just talk about it on the DSO feed. Let the DSO feed start being something other than DSO. Let it start being about people's hobbies and interests. This is the only way we're going to really start uh, creating content that other people might start finding interesting. So for those who want to make a difference, let's come together as a team 
and let's start synchronizing our efforts because I know there's a lot of people out there that are wanting to do crazy stuff. Yet I do see that a lot of us are working past each other. And, and more importantly, there is knowledge to be transferred between the bunch of us uh, that, that, that are on this platform. There are things, Darian, Sean, Marco, and, 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 um, Zafrin, we, we know things, but we, but as a collective, we can all know together as a brain trust. So that's, that, that, that's the vibe. That's what I'm trying to do over here. And so the voice of DSO, that's the reason why I got it going. Now, what, it's only three days old. It's a little bit of a bumpy start. The intentions, uh, from my side, firstly, is to, is to make it clear that the voice of DSO is a community and it represents a DAO, which means I'm not I'm not some sort of host or, or leader on top. I'm merely part of a community. And as a community, we need to feel like this belongs to all of us, not one person. Okay. It's very important. Before I share my screen, does anyone want to say anything before I move over to the next phase of this chat? I'd just say uh, that I appreciate you getting this started. Um, there, there have been some other efforts that have uh, happened in the past. Some have failed and some have persisted. And uh, there's a few new efforts underway, which uh, we can always talk about. But uh, I think the fact that you're so assertive is a positive thing. And uh, I, I believe in action as well. So I appreciate you. Great. Thanks so much for that, Darren. I appreciate it. No, it's, and, and, as, and that's another thing as well. Um, I, I have got it in my notes is that there are a lot of initiatives actually going on. And this is in no way going to be competing with those. We are going to, the intention is to collaborate. So if there's other telegram groups, I know there are a few. And uh, uh, Randir, if I said his name correctly, he actually pointed out some of the uh, telegram groups that already exist by others that have been around for a very long time. And some of these telegram groups have got like hundreds of people inside them. But he did mention that these are more general uh, groups, uh, Whereas he realized that what I'm trying to do with Voice of DSO is a little bit more focused. Uh, Voice of DSO is a group of action. And, and I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to be reiterating that the whole time. It's, it's execution. It's execution. But in no way are we only going to be ourselves. I want to, I want us to collaborate with a uh, community DAO and with any other initiatives that are running around. I definitely want us to, to all work together. The more, the merrier. So I'm just showing this quickly. Uh, and this is for the sake of rec uh, recording this video and also for the sake of uh, for those who don't know. So yes, the Telegram group and it's in my profile. So if you go onto Diamond and you go to my profile, you'll see at the bottom, uh, where are we? Sorry. There we go. Want to help grow the DSO? Join our Voice of DSO group. There's the link. Okay. So that's the group. And if I go back over here, we're currently 18 members strong. Yay. And all... The only thing that I sort of want to try and help everyone get and understand about this Telegram group is this. It's a place for us to socialize. It's a place for us to chat and innovate and discuss. And there's going to be a lot of information that's going to disappear into these discussions. And a lot of people are not going to have the time to go and see what the last 900 messages are. So this is how it works. And, and if, if it's anything that I want this community to build a habit of is – when you wake up or maybe once or twice or three times a day, come into this community and go to the pinned messages and see if there's anything that needs to be actioned. This is the easiest way that I can take the, the, the items that need attention out of the massive amounts of discussions that might occur and put them in a place where you can go and see, oh, okay, they, these are the things that need to be actioned or discussed. And, and just go through it and when you can action those items accordingly. So right now it's not a lot. There's only, uh, the, the, this is sort of the welcome message and this is, uh, the community guidelines over here is me sort of trying to show people how we are going to make this work or simulate a DAO. We're going to do it based on token based quorum voting, which is the simplest kind of sort of DAO that you can create. And it's based on a 60% of the community members need to vote for the poll to be valid. And the total members requires, um, yeah, and that's based on the time of voting. And obviously, the majority vote is what wins. But there's also an expiry time of 48 hours. Now, this gives a lot of people who might not have been able to jump onto the group on a particular day to at least jump on on the next day and be a part of these votes. But the truth is, after it expires and we don't hit 60% of the members, theoretically, it's an invalid ballot. 
and it just disappears. And 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 what if it was the same? Like I had one, for example, do we change the name of Voice of DSA to something else? Now, we needed about 12 votes. We only got five. So after 48 hours, it became invalid. And then we stay Voice of DSA until at some point people want to maybe decide that we do want to change the name. But again, we're going to have to raise the vote and we're going to have to have at least uh, 60% participation. So that's what the welcome message is. And then over here, you'll see there's only one item for action at the moment. And this is from Mr. Zafrin. You know him as Omnifrog on, on DSO. And he published an article uh, this morning, our time, uh, UTC time, where he wants to create some sort of uh, incentive of, of growing trees and planting trees. And I've got the item open here somewhere. So here's the, here's, the, here's the post, and if you can go and read the full article on Overcloud. I love the article feature on Overcloud. It is awesome. And then if you go inside here, you can see that OmniFrog has sort of created this, the, this idea of how can we maybe, uh, uh, you know, plant trees or do something like uh, that, that, that can benefit the world, but we can also use the DISA platform in order to incentivize exclusive NFTs or, or some diamond rewards, something that where people could get something back. And he's already put up quite a, an idea. It's almost as if he wants to, you know, he could very well have set up a DAO over here, but he set it up as an article and he's saying at the bottom, he would love to get some feedback and suggestions from the community. So it's fantastic. And I've already provided my feedback. I thought it was a great idea to maybe say that those who do plant a, a tree or something like that, that they take a video and they upload it on Overcloud Stories. So, so they actually make use of Overcloud's features. And I'm sure the team at Overcloud might be able to send or donate a couple of diamonds or something to those who do plant trees, seeing as they're using their feature. So, so, but I think, and this is a good, this is a great idea of the voice of DSO community, because what I did over here is in the Telegram, I said to everyone, Zafrin's posted this article. It looks like a great incentive. How about we help him? If you agree, if you like what he's saying, go and give him a like. Go and throw him a diamond. Go and repost it. Maybe comment. Show some activity on it. If we're lucky, it might become a hot topic and it might get out to a lot more people. And as a community, as, as the voice of DSO, if we work together, we can at least just kickstart some of these incentives um, on the DSO platform if we do, in fact, agree with that. I'll never, I'll never ask anyone in the community to do anything that they wouldn't agree with. So, but that's, that's the idea over here. And it's not because uh, uh, Zafrin Omnifrog is part of our community that I'm saying that we do this. I'm saying we go and scour the DSO feed. And if we see that there are things that might need attention that we as a team can help with in uh, that would benefit users or, uh, or create more engagement on the DSO feed or, or, or help with the incentives. Maybe we've got skills. And now that we're learning who we are as a team, we can now say, okay, we know which skills we have and we might be able to pinpoint and say, listen, I know this person. Uh, please, uh, we, 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 there's a, there's a collaboration opportunity over here. And, and finally events as well, like these events and stuff, you know, uh, what, what's been happening is, um, OmniFrog's been helping me get this event out over there. And I haven't, I don't know if anyone else has really helped. And if they have, I apologize if I didn't see it, but, as I can see right now, it, it does seem that it was just sort of OmniFrog trying to help create presence of this of, of this meetup tonight, and I do appreciate it. But if we had to work as a team, we might be able to get more people involved in these and other kind of events, and slowly but surely, it will grow into something. It just inevitably has to. So I think that once again explains what I'm trying to do with this group. So just to close this off again, uh, two or three times a day, just come and check if there's any pinned item section. And if we can just do that as a community, as a voice of DSA community, uh, things are going to go a long way and we, we, we're going to get far with this, with this group. Let me get to the tips. So the first one, I want to just start with Overclout. And I, I've been trying to get people to, to do this. So when you post articles, when you post content, if it's a relevant article or something that you're saying that's relevant to a specific topic or to a specific event, go ahead and hashtag it. Because if we get into the habit of hashtagging these, Overcloud's got a great feature over here where we can start seeing what's trending for today and overall. I think it's a great feature. And if we can start just using hashtags, not a lot, just two to three, and never something irrelevant. If I hashtag John Jardine, 
It's not going to make any sense. Who else is going to hashtag John Jardine? It doesn't make any sense. But if I hashtag Voice of Disa, and other people are talking about Voice of Disa, and you go, and after this meetup, you go and you say, "Listen, I I attended Voice of Disa. It was awesome. I uh, hope hope to be part of next week." At the bottom, hashtag Voice of Disa. Now, what happens is a few more people create that. It's going to create a trend, and people are going to start seeing it, especially if they use Overcloud. So that's an example, but two to three hashtags on relevant topics and events is going to start making your posts a lot more noticeable, and it's going to start creating a vibe on, on certain topics. The second one is, if no one knows this already, they, on the overclouds, again, you go to articles. This is powerful, and I know right now it is like it's phase one. It's its minimum viable product, but they've already done a great job using very similar features to what Medium.com offers, and they allow you to post these articles. The articles sit in some place. I have no idea if they're storing it centrally. I'm assuming they are, but they do go and post a link to the article, and it's pretty good. It's got the it's got the thumbnail, and it's got a title, and they give you a bit of a buzz around that. And what I like about this is that they monitor the kind of diamonds that you are receiving back from that article, which I think is great. So I get to see, uh, you know, OmniFrog's already generated this in diamonds, which I think is pretty cool. And before you know it, once more people start realizing that these articles are, yeah, you're going to start getting pretty interesting numbers. If we go to me, this is me, DSA Essentials course, you know, so mine are starting to look, close, you know, not too bad. But at some point, it's going to start getting more and more and more. The more people can start engaging. So we need to really start getting some articles out there. All right. So my third tip is got nothing to relate it to uh, Web3 or DSO, but it's something that really helps me with productivity. And that is an app called Pocket. Pocket is, for lack of a better term, absolutely brilliant. I've been using it for over 10 years. And what it does is it allows you to grab any article or any tweet or anything that you want to read up on, but don't have the time to, and you can pocket it. You click on the icon and it can, it will actually send it to your pocket app and it will save it there for you to read and view later on. But it does so much more than that. It actually removes the noise from the web page where the article existed. And I'm going to show you a quick example of this now. But what I want to show you as well is that you can have Pocket for almost anything. And on almost every browser, there's an, a Pocket extension, even on Safari, where you can uh, just download the extension or install it, sign in with your free Pocket account, by the way. Nothing of what I'm mentioning now is paid for. There is a, there is a premium service, but I'm talking about the free version over here. And uh, if I go now to, the, say, medium.com, and I, re I loaded this page recently, and I can see our very own Dean Reads uh, uh, submitted three days ago a short history of NFTs on DSA. So if I go inside here, I don't have time to read this right now. I'm busy with an event. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pocket it and it's going to save it to my pocket uh, app. And this is how the page looks. But if I go to my pocket app, which you can install on almost anything, that comes the article through. And if I click on the article, this is how clean it is by the time it gets to my app. And they've even got features that allow you to, uh, uh, it's got like a voice feature, uh, text to speech, so that if you're in the car, you can actually hear the, the 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 speech version of this. You don't have to physically read it. So I've been using this app for uh, this app for over ten years, and I, I can't I can't rave about it enough. And I don't even use the paid for version. So this is not a sales or affiliate or anything like that. This is the free version that's going to get you this far. All right. And then I'm on a final tip. And the final tip is if you use MetaMask which is the, uh, the, the the browser extension wallet that you can see over here. He has my MetaMask uh, wallet. And uh, it's, a great, it's a great wallet for Ethereum-based um, uh, blockchains for you to store your uh, Ethereum currencies as well as your NFTs. Uh, but if you don't know this, there's, there's a lot of Ethereum blockchains. And what happens is usually uh, you'll, by default, when you install uh, MetaMask and you set up MetaMask, then by default, you have the Ethereum mainnet, but you don't have any of the other blockchains. So you can see, I used to work on Avalanche. I've got the C chain here, but now I need to go to Solana. Where am I going to get the Solana blockchain? And this is where it gets tricky for people. But the good news is that there is a website called chainlist.org. And this website allows you to automatically connect to any one of the Ethereum-based virtual machines. So if I can go, yeah, I connected my wallet already. 
so all I needed to do was connect my MetaMask to, to this website. And if I go and look for Solana, it's Solana. I suppose it's not Ethereum based then. Uh, but I mean, what's a good example? I mean, Binance. Binance is a great example. So I don't have Binance over here. See, I can say add to MetaMask and we're going to go through a sign up, switch networks. And as easy as that, I now have Binance as part, uh, uh, the Binance blockchain as part of my MetaMask wallet. So chainlist.org is a great place for you to just go and add these additional blockchains. Yes, yeah, Polygon as well. I, th- I kept saying Solana, but I was referring to Polygon. So those are my tips. I hope that uh, I hope this was actually value add. This is the first meetup. I know we we actually over running a little bit. I want to already have it finished by now. I know everyone's busy, but I'm going to stop at this. I'm going to say thanks everyone who joined for 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 giving me the time. This is the first one. We are going to make it better. I I'm I want to open the floor to everyone. Q and A, suggestions, feedback. The floor is yours. I'm going to stop sharing. Welcome, Sean. Hey. Hey, how is everything? Well in yourself. Thanks so much for joining the session. Absolutely. I absolutely had to uh, had to pop in see what was going on. But no, this is this is absolutely awesome. Uh, like pretty much everybody's already said, absolutely love what you're doing. I love this. All of it. Like, I think it's amazing. And um, I guess uh, one of the questions I do want to ask, I feel like so many people are, always focused on uh, on the negative in a sense because I feel like so many people are like, hey, what's what's going to be the downfall of DSO? But I'd rather ask, like, what do you think is going to be the main thing that puts DSO on the map? Mm, that's actually a good question. <clears throat> so what is what is going to put DSO on the map? Th- this is my opinion. Because basically- in, in regards yeah. to that question – the reason I'm asking is like, how could we help focus on that more or drive more engagement to that feature or whatever it may be like, how can we kind of revolve ourselves around it to, you know, bring it to light? So, and uh, yeah. My two, the two things that in my head seem every time I think about it, cause I, I, there's like, there's about 50 things in my head that can, that, that can make the, that I feel that could make these so better. But every time I think about these two, then I get goosebumps because it feels like it's a no-brainer. The first one, communities. Even Twitter. Look at what Twitter did now with communities that they finally started opening up to the public. And it, it is night and day from the, the noisy Twitter feeds that you see on a day-by-day basis. You go into those communities now, it is focused content, and already the vibe is different, and there's so much more engagement. And it, it's probably one of the best things that Twitter could have done was create these communities. And if once we can have that on DSO, where we can start creating these incentives, not only as an open feed, but as a focused community, that and, and you might, and this comes to my second point, is that um, the, the, when, you st- when we start designing solutions on DSO that are not social apps with non-social features, but non-social apps with social features. Okay. So uh, I keep saying, uh, everyone keeps telling me what is metability? What is metability? So I, I say metability is a learn to earn education platform. It's a learning management system, but it's going to have DSO social features. So it's a learning management system with social baked into it. And when we start getting more of these kind of apps that aren't necessarily social apps, but are going to incorporate social features then I think things are going to get a lot of, they're going to get very interesting. I definitely know what you mean. Yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely an interesting. Do you think Dow Dow in that regard will kind of fill that gap then? In regards to I the do. community side of things? I, I do. I do. I think Dow Dow is going to allow the opportunity to centralize a lot of these efforts and to start understanding because people are going to be forced also with Dow Dow. You can't go inside there and post in one message or in three, in one paragraph. I want to do this. I need funding. You're going to have to do your homework. You're going to have to provide, uh, uh, you know, the necessary business sort of requirements and, 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 and not, not to that level because they're doing a lot of the stuff for you, but you just can't, you can't just come in like with the Octane fund. They were very graceful with the Octane Fund. You didn't even have to have a demo if you wanted to apply for the Octane Fund. You could literally just try and explain to them what uh, what it is you're trying to build. And I don't know if I don't know if many got away with that. But I mean, like by the time I joined the Octane, it was too late. 
But when I submitted Metability for the Octane, I was able to provide a live website with video introductions, with the full scope and everything. But their questionnaire didn't even need a lot of that. They just said, if you can't provide it, what would you like us to do? Now, the Dada is not going to give you that. You're going to have to be a little bit more advanced in terms of what you want and, and justify why they're going to apply for funding. And what I see is when the DAO launches, there's just going to be the swarm of, of DAOs on the DAO DAO. And, and there's going to be a lot of noise initially, and there's going to be a lot of filtering. But at the same time, there's going to be a lot of excitement. So, but, but at some point, the noise is going to clear. People are going to start realizing that it's not as easy as just saying, I want to create a DAO to do this or whatever, and that there's actually a little bit more to it. And, but at some point, when it stabilizes, then it's going to get exciting. And it's going to be great. No, I definitely know what you mean. Yeah, and it's kind of weird too, because like in regards to that uh, that barrier to entry, I feel like so many people shy away from it, in mm -hmm. a sense, because it's simply just a barrier to entry. But at the same time, like it, it promotes such a beneficial factor to to growth as a whole. Um, I think that's actually a really good point that you kind of kind of pinpointed. But I do got to bounce. I got a few things to uh, to hop to. You guys have a great one. I'll catch you guys. Thanks so much, Sean. Thanks so much for the questions. Always, Thanks so much always. for joining. I appreciate it. Actually, that was great. Uh, you know, I was I literally doesn't know about Pocket and also that was actually very helpful. And yeah, cool. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah, because uh, it is really helpful. And and uh, this article thing, I. I really didn't uh, know about our cloud, our cloud uh, much, because I landed in Diamond directly, uh, you know, and I was using even from the first day I was using Diamond only. Then mm -hmm. it came to know about supernovas, and uh, <laughs> really, you know, only just three four days before uh, started using our cloud. So that is actually good because I didn't. Even thought about the hashtagging there mm. itself because I used to hashtag everything on, uh, uh, like, you know, in the diamond. So that's a great one. And mm. uh, yeah, as, as you said, uh, being active and, uh, you know, we need to seek out who can do what. Mm. And altogether, uh, yeah, uh, in future uh, coming days, we can, you know, build up things. And okay. I'm so happy that uh, we happen to be here. Well, that's great. Thanks, Thank Omnifog. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. Thank I appreciate it. And, and it's great also, we, we just so everyone knows, uh, uh, Omnifrog and I are actually in a very similar time zone. So it's great because when I'm on, a lot of the sort of people international for me in America or, or in Australia, they sort of bouncing off or, or sleeping. And it, well, what's great is, uh, you know, I know that Omnifrog is going to be there to sort of help me because he's part of the voice of TSO community and he's, and he's, he said that he's going to be there and he's going to be helping. So it's great that I have someone in my time zone that can actually work with me when, and then yeah. when, when, when the Americans and everyone else wake up that we can clock off and they can take over and, and soon there's going to be a great, there's going to be a great flow. Thanks. Thanks, Zephyr. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Darian, you, anything? Uh, no, I think we, we can keep it short. Uh, maybe just a brief comment on both the um, that I agree on the community feature. I've been really excited for the uh, um, Andre community uh, feature. So um, and then we've we you know been discussing this since uh, a year ago on DSO on um, community features, and I think that there were more projects that intended to build community features. There was a Reddit style um, app that was supposed to launch and. Uh, so I think it's been long, long waiting. So uh, really looking forward to bringing things like Discord onto uh, onto DSO, even the Telegram group onto DSO. Uh, so I think Entra is kind of the only one that really has uh, something that's strongly in the works uh, around that. Um, besides, uh, I think um, DSO Messenger uh, was intended to do some of that as well. Um, I haven't spoken with their team directly, but uh, their their messages weren't on chain initially, but I think they're working on that. So that could be a, a option as well. For sure. The, the I... second thing, oh, sorry, go ahead. Carry on. No, no, carry on, carry on. I, I was just going to say the second thing on hashtags, 
uh, there was a lot of pushback early on on using hashtags just because everyone was thinking it was sort of web two. So uh, I did ideate with a, a focus group on what were some other solutions. And we came up with things like tagging, like Entre uses, which are uh, not in the post themselves, but just used as uh, extra metadata for the post. Um, and what we've found out is people actually do like using uh, hashtags in the post or uh, using um, tags in the post because then you can see what the tags are you know when they're just metadata or extra uh, you need everyone to design a specific ui around that to show the tags uh, and then you have an issue where there's not continuity across all the platforms mm -hmm. so i think as much as some people wanted to move away from the web 2 hashtags uh, you know it's still either a good web 2.5 bridge or it may continue mm -hmm. to be a thing because it's just the most clear way to use uh, content tags is right in the body of the post. So um, I agree, we should we should all use tags that are relevant and uh, keep doing that. Open Prosper also has some tag analytics. So um, beyond open uh, beyond Overclout, there's also Open Prosper to to look at hashtags and um, as well as uh, also in CloudFeed or DSoFi. So um, there are some apps using hashtags, so we might as well use them as users. I can't wait for DSoFi. But you're right. Yeah, you made a, you made good points over there. Thanks very much for that, Darian. And my question to you is, where I, 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 you still got video content that's coming out, right? Are you where are you going to host that? So that's a good question. Um, right now, uh, one of my video shows is on YouTube, uh, and uh, sometimes when I was doing my daily dips, uh, I did I don't know sixty five of those or something uh, wow. daily videos. Um, they were all posted directly through DSO which um, still doesn't upload to decentralized file storage, but it uh, was using DSO native video. And, uh, you know, depending on what node you uploaded it through is normally like the, the Google blob, kind of like uh, the images are handled for DSO. But um, I think hopefully some nodes are going to have some opportunities to put that on um, IPFS or something. And then you just have that uh, posted directly through one of the DSO nodes. I know BitCast is sort of like the main video platform that aggregates videos, but they don't mm -hmm. have their own native upload functionality. So we'll have to talk to Patrick there and see if that's in the works. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would love to post videos like actually on chain and the content be on chain. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, obviously, because in doing that, even when we start sharing it onto the social feeds, like, um, uh, like, like whatever, Twitter or Reddit or wherever, you know, you're bringing that audience. Yeah. You're bringing them out to to the DSO, which is which is which is what I do with the articles. So when I, I publish the article now on Overcloud, and then I go and post the links all over the social streams, and then they got to come and see the article on on Overcloud, which is great because you're bringing them to to DSO. But I do I'm very careful about bringing them to a semi-built environment or one that forces them to have to log in with a DSO account or whatever. I'm very 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 cautious of that. Uh, but but. As you said, I'm, I'm, my intent is to be on chain, but definitely not introduce. A, and I'm going to say, I'm just going to say it bluntly, I don't want to introduce a broken app to people on Twitter. And now they got to view my article or video on an app that might not be working well or forcing them to now buy DSO or something like that. So I'm still there at the moment. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I think um, that's one thing DSOFI is solving for is uh, apparently you can create. Uh, profiles without needing to buy DSO and stuff, so um, that's that's going to be a turning point, I think, and uh, we'll we'll see how well how smooth that that experience is. I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear the or see the white paper on how they plan on doing that. Yes, I think um, I I had pitched doing pre-funded accounts with um, mm -hmm. if you have like a a wait list or uh, you're able to get people to refer with like unique codes, so you can limit the amount of uh, bots or spam that's scammers that are coming in. Uh, yeah. So you can pre-fund accounts with small amounts that is just enough for social transactions. Uh, and, and then that could, you know, even a dollar. I, 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 my total transactions over the last year cost less than a dollar. And yeah. I've done, you know, tens of thousands. So uh, if you can get someone started for a year before they have to think about uh, acquiring any DSO, um, that's, that's, you know, a great start. And I think it, it works even, you know, when the numbers are in the thousands, it's just if you get hundreds of thousands of bots uh, mm. taking away that pre-funded amount, even at a dollar, that's a problem. So uh, I'm with you. I'd love to see how this gets implemented and uh, 
then we can you know take that learning to the other apps. Absolutely. Oh, wonderful, Darian. Thanks. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people joining you. Oh, welcome, everyone. Uh, I, so I'm 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 happy to answer any other questions. If you want to ask questions, just raise your hand, and then I will invite you into the uh, as a speaker, and you can ask away. And for those who feel like they've enjoyed the session and they want to move off, there is a video. I am recording this, and it will be published uh, on my uh, Web3 Simplified YouTube channel, and there will be links all over the place. So uh, don't worry if you if you missed out on anything. Anyone got any further questions? I got a drop, so uh, thank you. I'll, I'll yeah. check out the recording after, and we'll we'll talk again uh, next week, if not before. Thanks, Darian. Have a good one. Hi, John. Can you um can you tell me a little bit about yourself, like your background? Yeah, sure, no problem. Uh, I am 42 years of age, and I began my software development career around the age of 21. I was uh, I was an intern at a software consulting company, so. What was great about that is while I was an intern and I had to sink or swim, I, it looks like I could, uh, I landed up being able to swim and I was introduced to enterprise businesses and I had to design software solutions for them using IBM collaboration technology. So I don't know, you know, like IBM's very, uh, they, a lot of their stack is very sort of enterprisey and, and not a lot of people know the technology, but it was very similar to sort of Java and, and then those kind of things. So I, I, I sort of built up designing these enterprise solutions, business process management, and, and sort of production management systems across various industries using that technology, using Java technology. And, and as I matured as a developer, then I also got into a lot of web development. Uh, well, even before Web2 sort of was around, I was doing the HTML and all that funky stuff before we even knew what HTML5 or, or CSS3 was. Uh, I saw the horrible part of JavaScript. But, um, I mean, fast forward a good couple of years, and I was fortunate enough, you know, if I look at where I am now, I've probably implemented over 300 development projects. When I say implemented, I was business analyst, I was project manager. I mean, I run my own software company right now, so we do a lot of integration and cloud architecture. We do a lot of DevOps and, and all this modern stuff. We use the MERN stack, so we use a lot of open source technologies like Node.js, React.js, Mongo. And uh, we've designed products as well. So we've got a, like a middleware integration platform as a service that's on the cloud as well as gets used for enterprise. And then uh, I don't know if you were around when I mentioned the decentralized application that I built at the beginning of this year, which is um, it's actually called Metability and it's live. You could go to metability.io and to give you an idea of my skills and Forgive me for, for, for if this sounds like, uh, like boasting a bit, but this, everything that you see over here was pretty much developed by me in a period of two months from scratch. And it's, I think what I always tell my, my colleagues is this, this is a reflection of what I've been able to do over the past 20 years. I was be able to build these kind of, this kind of platform and the solution that uses gamification, integrates with multiple blockchains and and uh, the incentive is to uh, incentivize learners to earn crypto by actually learning many of these courses. And you can see there's a lot of Web3 courses going on over here. But, yeah, I've, I've kind of been everywhere and I've, I've been involved in many things. I have actually designed mobile apps, native apps, Android, iOS. I've worked on probably six different development platforms. I know about eight programming languages. It's quite sad, actually. But... Uh, I think that that was like a very, very bird's eye view. Yeah, that's um, definitely very impressive. I mean, I don't think it's boasting. I think, um, you know, you're just being, you know, happy for and proud of what you've done. And it's definitely um, an impressive lineup of all those uh, applications that you've made and everything that you're able to uh, develop. But I wanted to ask you also, like, what is your, um, what is like your background on DISA and like crypto in particular? So, and I'm going to warn everyone this, you're going to have a good laugh, but we, I'm going to have a power cut in nine minutes. <laughs> the, the area that I live here in South Africa, we do load shedding, which is scheduled. And uh, our schedule is uh, 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 for two hours in nine minutes time. But I'm going to get that question answered, Andrew. So I only know DISO for um, literally my, my first month. My official first month of DISO was the other day. I think it was last week, Thursday, where I was now officially on DISO for a month. So before that, 
uh, I did. I had no idea about Visa, which is why when that Metability app that I showed you now, that learning app, that was meant to be built on the Avalanche blockchain. That was my intention. But because I wanted social aspects and because I wanted the learn-to-earn capabilities and the investing options uh, in, in creators as well as learners, what Deezo has right now, I would have landed up having to build even though I put it on the Avalanche blockchain. So um, thank goodness I found Deezo a month ago because now I can just lend on their architecture and their platform and I can go ahead and just integrate those capabilities into Metability and I don't have to spend unnecessary uh, innovation and development time on that. My experience on blockchain, not a lot, eh? I started uh, Web3, probably, I knew about Web3 a long time ago, and other than investing in Ethereum, yeah, and knowing a little bit about Solidity, nothing enough to create my own smart contracts. The only real time that I got into Web3 was last year, November, and um, and I had to hit the ground, like, running hard. But thank goodness, there's a lot of free content out there on Web3. People don't realize that if you go to Metability again, you'll see that I'm actually referencing third-party courses on how to create your own NFT marketplaces, how to create your own DAOs, how to do this, how to do that, how to create your own games. And so all I did was I just found these online platforms that provide this content for free. And I just dug in and I learned and I learned Solidity and I learned blockchain technologies. There's, by the way, uh, for those who really want to, or especially if you know JS developers or web developers and you want to get into blockchain, there's a platform called Morales, M-O-R-A-L-I-S. I'm going to put it in the chat, morales.io. They are the firebase for blockchain. They do all the hard heavy lifting for you. All you need to do is bring your normal web skills to the table. They do the rest for you because you just interface with their APIs. And before you know it, you're going to be a blockchain. Uh, you're going to be developing decentralized applications on the blockchain quick, quick, quick and easy. Um, and just to close off, uh, what, what, what a lot of people don't realize as well. And I just need to say this for anyone thinking that it, could they be a blockchain developer? Developing de decentralized applications is 80% web, 20% blockchain. So if you are already a web developer or designer, you already got 80% covered. All you need to do is learn how to write that business logic that will run on the blockchain and uh, and how and how some of the mechanics work. Like obviously your data is stored on chain and things like that. So And DSO has just changed the game as well because they put everything on chain. Whereas if you go to Ethereum, you have to put as little as possible. They only want the relevant stuff on chain, like hashes and stuff. So those hashes have to link to off-chain data because you're going to pay a fortune. DSO has changed the game. And now you can put everything on chain. So learning a bit of those mechanics is really going to take you, uh, get you far. <laughs> yes, that was very good. I also wanted to ask you, um, are you familiar with, um, with like rhetoric from the, uh, from like a seller's perspective? Like people, so they talk about, um, you know, appealing to like the, the pathos of a buyer and, you know, things like that, like the Aristotle uh, rhetoric devices. I actually, I'm not too familiar with that, Adrian. So we were talking about it last week and I've come to learn that I think it's very important to look at rhetoric from a buyer's perspective. And I wanted to ask you, how important do you think it is to have credibility as a blockchain developer in the space and not the kind of credibility that's, that's, you know, this is what I can do. Um, like I'm a full stack developer. I've been involved in X, Y, and Z, but based on projects that have failed and have caused people to lose money, because if you look at the founders of DSO, if you look at the founders of, um, you know, Terra and Luna, they have, these aren't their first projects, you know, and yeah. they've been in charge of things that have crashed before. And I was just wondering what your opinion is on how important you think, you know, having an honest background is because you see in this space, there are a lot of people that still remain anonymous when they're trying to create like an alternative to fiat, you know, they're getting people to put a lot of money down. And I think that a big thing in this space is trust, especially if you're trying to make DAOs, especially yeah. if you're trying to make a decentralized application that's trying to do something for, you know, society, right? If people are honest about like, oh, this is like a gambling platform. Okay, that makes sense. You know, we understand the risk. But whenever yeah. people are talking about like, you know, 
connect your bank account, connect your savings and retirement account and put thousands in. I was wondering what your opinion is on, you know, having a sort of um, like safe background. Oh, Adrian, it, it's a fantastic question. And I'll say this, that I've <laughs> got three minutes left before the lights are out on my side. But, and, and, and if I don't finish this, Adrian, I am following you and, and you can just link with me and, and, and we, we can continue and have these discussions uh, offline. Absolutely. Um, so being very new to the Web3 space, keeping in mind that I only started in November, it is... I'm actually amazed at how new you can be to the space and be funded. And I, I, I'm even more surprised at how awesome some of the decentralized apps that are currently running, like, like uh, Trader Joe, these, these, um, these liquidity pools and, and, and all these apps that are running, like, uh, and I'm speaking from the Avalanche blockchain because that's where I was intending to, to work on, that when I when they interviewed the guys that are making millions of 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 this uh, 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 Trader Joe, they said that they they three months ago they weren't even blockchain developers. They had to learn Solidity and then sort of jump in. But the like to to, to accurately answer your question, the the credibility. I I just I think I'd be lying to you, Adrian. I don't know this game on the Web three space. I'm still too new at it, and I myself am trying to find funders for my project, my metability project. And I'm having to, I'm having to have very interesting conversations and, and, and uh, justifications versus what I've had designing enterprise solutions and selling my enterprise product, which I have a much easier time selling. So I I probably have to end it off there and say that I'd be lying to you if I really could answer this question in a way that would satisfy you. <laughs> it's no worries. No worries. But um, I just wanted to leave it there. And uh, just with one thing, are you familiar with basis? Basis, B A S I S. Yes, B A S I S. And um, if you're not, I just want you to um, maybe look into that. And uh, especially if you're getting involved in DSO and look into basis. And, you know, since, especially since this space is not very regulated, there's a group of people that are trying to protect the consumers in this space you know okay. and i think it's important to always be a critic especially if you're new and always to second guess things great i'll definitely do that thanks adrian